Right, talking about pastures building soils. Um, yesterday, we heard about water management becoming key to agriculture in the future with global warming, um, rainfall becoming more seasonal, sporadic, heavier downpours, issues with erosion, soil loss, and um, the need to stop all this and still be able to produce food. And on a global issue, and we've got switched, um, we face the issues of providing a reliable supply of clean water and quality food to a growing population. But it's estimated that 60% of world agricultural soils are now pretty much worn out, pre-desertification, which is classified as less than 1.7% soil organic matter. Um, and many of these soils that are worn out are in brittle climates, so are struggling to produce food unless we're using um, irrigation. And um, they are prone to more erosion and to blowing away. So, mixed up slides. So soil organic matter, what is it? The best way to um, describe it is in the three categories, green, brown, and black carbon. It's basically anything that comes from a living source is going and being broken down in the soil. The green carbon is anything with a low carbon to nitrogen ratio, so lush cover crops that are incorporated, slurry, chicken and pig manure. These tend to be rapidly broken down by bacteria to release the nutrients for crop growth, but also that carbon that's um, contained in them is respired by the bacteria and comes back out of the soil as carbon dioxide. The brown carbon is the more fibrous material, a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio. This includes crop residues, more mature cover crops, farmyard manure, compost. This tends to be broken down more by fungi, slowly degraded, some nutrients released for crop growth, but the fungi will use the carbon in that to build it into more complex carbon compounds, which is what we call humus. And the black carbon contains these humic substances, humates, biochar. These are stable forms of carbon which will stay in the soil for many years and um, put many properties into the soil. So humus has a major role in soils. It opens up soils. Um, you get humus into soil where soils are slumped and compacted. It will bind the clay particles together into this crumb structure, open the soil up, making it much more lighter, easier working, more porous, so it will absorb moisture easier. So then with rainfall, we don't get the runoff of rainfall, which we tend to get with these compacted soils. That rainfall is actually absorbed into the soil, um, stemming erosion. The rainfall then percolates slowly through the soil structure into either groundwater or into <coughs> drains and into streams, slowing the flow of this rainwater into the streams and the rivers, reducing the flood risk um, further downstream because it's keeping that moisture where it should be in the land. Um, the humus has a huge ability to hold water in the soil for future crop growth. It's estimated for every 1% we build soil organic matter, we can hold an extra half an inch of water in that soil. That's another 125,000 litres per hectare for every 1% we increase the soil organic matter. The humus also has a huge ability to hold nutrients. Um, clay is renowned for holding cations. Humus has about 30 to 50 times the capacity of holding nutrients than what clay has. It also holds the negatively charged ions like the nitrates and the sulfates. So reducing leaching of these elements from the soil so by the time rainwater has come, gone into these soils, been filtered through this humus, 
It's been scrubbed of its nutrients and we're getting clean water entering the drains and the nutrients and some of that moisture held in the soil. This reserve of nutrients acts as the soil's flywheel and where we're looking to grow bigger crops, especially in an organic situation, we've got soil microbes which are working through the autumn and the winter, the spring, whenever soil temperatures allow to release nutrients and make them available at a time when crops are growing very slowly, not taking up much nutrients. If we've got a big enough flywheel in that soil to hold on to these nutrients, we have a big store of nutrients come the spring when you get the rapid um, growth of crops to feed that crop and keep it going, which is where a lot of organic yield is lost because that crop takes off and just can't get the nutrients that it wants. And this organic, this humus flywheel holds those nutrients there um, to supply that need. It also holds a large amount of water there which helps keep the crops growing through a dry period. So in terms of pasture management, we're not only managing for production, but we're managing to build soil fertility and to deal with these environmental issues, including the water and nutrient management and the carbon footprint, greenhouse gas emissions. I apologise for this slide, it is slightly um, faint, but when we're looking at grazing management, if we're in a rotational system, we graze the plant, as little leaf area left, as it starts to regrow, it uses root reserves to push up the first piece of new leaf. That then starts to respire, but because it has such a small area, it cannot it's using the photosynthate made by that leaf primarily to produce extra leaf to get a bigger solar panel. So many of the periphery roots are shut off and allowed to die back. As the plant grows, it increases its leaf area. It starts to regrow that root system, starts to rebuild its reserves. And at this stage, we're at the two and a half to three leaf ryegrass with a conventional uh, short, ro short grass rotational grazing, we would then go back to the start and go round again. In that cycle, the plant hasn't had enough leaf area to produce excess um, sugars, so all what it produces is used for crop growth. At this stage, that plant is only just getting its full leaf canopy getting up to maximum production, and we're then grazing it off again. With a more diverse sward, we can allow this plant to go right through up to the point of flowering, with very little deterioration in the actual quality of the forage being produced. From here up to the flowering stage, that plant is producing anything up to 60 to 80% or 60 to 80% of the photosynthate that plant is producing is surplus to requirements and tends to be exuded through the roots into the soil. And it's this liquid carbon pathway which is essential for sequestering carbon back into the soil for building the soil organic matter. Some of that will be respired by bacteria and come back out as carbon dioxide. But if we are getting carbon dioxide um, coming back out of the soil. Carbon dioxide is a dense gas, so it tends to get held under that canopy, building the carbon dioxide levels in that canopy and actually feeding more rapid photosynthesis. The fungi will use that um, sugar that's coming from the roots and start building that up into the complex carbon compounds, the um, humus, humic uh, substances which give these properties to the soil. And it's this system of um, grazing management that we've been using um, for sort of the last five, six years with a few tweaks along the way. And the important 
the soil microbes are massively important to make the most of what this pasture management is doing. As we look at this um, slide from top to bottom, we're going from primarily bacterial um, dominated processes to more fungal pr processes down here. But the, back, the microbes recycle the nutrients, they release some of the locked up nutrients from the parent soil material, we're building the humus, we're improving nutrient uptake by plants, especially with mycorrhizal associations, and some of the mycorrhizal fungi will produce vitamins, hormones, and antibiotics, which all have, have an influence on the quality of crop growth. And when we're actually managing pasture, we've not only got to think about what we're doing with the animals on the surface, but also what we're doing to feed these microbes below the ground at the same time. In order to get increased microbial activity back into our soils, we've started composting farmyard manure, um, turning it rough and ready with a telehandler. But then this is spread at only eight tons per hectare, or three tons an acre. However, we have seen massive response. We put the first of it on this spring, and when things started to dry out um, come the summer, the fields that received the compost kept going and stood out um, markedly compared with the rest of the, the fields, even though they all had the same type of deep rooting mixtures in them. This is the type of thing we were grazing with um, these ring calf heifers. So it's a diverse mixture, just at the flowering stage. And um, they're going through, grazing the best of that. And we are trampling a little bit of more fibrous material in there. Um, just how much we actually need to be trampling in this um, climate, I'm not sure. I don't think we need to be on the real long rotational grazing, which is more akin to the dry climates that we saw in um, North America. We can get the benefit from this huge, um, this huge canopy here is capturing a lot of sunshine and producing a lot of sugar going back into the soil. So we don't really need to trample too much, but animals grazing covers like this will get some trampling anyway. This is dairy cows grazing that. That looks to be sort of Italian ryegrass dominated, but when you actually look into the sward, that is what they're actually grazing. A lot of quality leaf. They're not carnivorous yet. <laughs> and this is... Um, the sort of covers that we are leaving. So by, um, by managing these pastures in the way that we're managing them, we've opened these soils up, we're getting the production from them, we're building soil, and I mean, I'm on a farm now, at, which is above the 800 foot contour, was renowned for being the first farm in Gloucestershire to burn off in the summer. We've had good, um, we're now getting good pasture growth year round. Um, this summer, we had no shortage of pasture. What we did see was that paddocks where we built soil organic matter up produced far better, far more, qual more quantity of grass, but far more milk from that grass as well. And these paddocks where we've built organic matter up um, we've tested two of them so far. One, when we actually established the lay, was 4% soil organic matter. Five years later, it tested at 8% organic matter. Um, another one we've just tested this year was 5% organic matter when it went into the lay, and four years later, it's 9%. So those two pastures which we've tested have increased organic matter by 0.8 to 1% a year. And that is equivalent to sequestering somewhere in the order of 45 to 60 tonnes of carbon dioxide per hectare per year in those paddocks. 
and I was actually talking to someone from New Zealand who's growing forestry um, as a carbon offset and they're achieving something like the 40 to 60 tonnes of carbon dioxide with the forestry. The main issue with the forestry is that carbon's stood in the timber. With this pasture, the carbon's in the soil. And I think if we have any way of meeting the environmental goals that this government has, they're not going to do it by cutting emissions, but we've got to do it by sequestering carbon. By doing that, we are rebuilding our soils, putting the resilience back into our soils to give us some chance of being able to keep producing food with the vagaries of the climate, which are suggested through global warming. So to sum up, as farmers, our main role is to um, convert sunlight into food, which is a biological process which in the 20th century we lost sight of in our race to embrace chemistry. In the 21st century, we must harness the power of biology. Thank you.